Hi, it's Jen Taub. Welcome back to Booked Up, a podcast that features you, me, and our favorite authors. We release a new episode every Sunday. This week, we have something different for our book club. My good friends, Mary Trump and E. Jean Carroll are joining me to talk about our collaboration called Backstory Serial, a space on Substack where we are serializing a romance novel that Mary is writing called The Italian Lesson. Before we begin speaking, I'd like to share with you the opening paragraph just to give you a flavor for what Mary is creating. The last time I saw him, I wanted him dead. Now here he was, standing by the door, very much alive. When I opened my eyes, I couldn't see him clearly. The muffled sounds of the EKG and the low thrum of the fluorescent lights made my head hurt, and he hung back in the shadows. Still, I thought I saw the corner of his mouth curved upward in the beginning of a smile, the kind of smile he flashed at me when he knew he'd won. He moved toward the bed. I pretended not to notice and turned away as best I could, feigning disorientation. The closer he got, the further away my life seemed, my life. The idyllic life I had built away from him was slipping away. Then I remembered once wanting him dead. I had felt such horrible guilt afterward. It just wasn't like me. But I was a different person now, to the extent that's possible. He reached for my hand, and before I lost consciousness again, I thought, instead of wanting him dead, I should have been more proactive. And I felt no guilt at all. Hey, Mary and Eugene. Hello. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. Hello. So, you know how Booked Up is supposed to focus on nonfiction authors? And you're both nonfiction authors, actually, but you're here to talk about a collaboration you're both working on in the in the realm of fiction. Um, and it's called The Italian Lesson. Yeah, Eugene, I guess we should, uh, actually, it's called, the, 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 the um, novel is called The Italian Lesson. Right. Uh, we are serializing it on uh, a platform called Substack. Uh, so, Eugene, it looks like we have to catch Jen up on the project since she doesn't really know much about it. <laughs> um, so... For those of you who don't know, Substack is 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 literally a platform for newsletters. So anybody can start a newsletter on Substack and you can have free subscribers and paid subscribers and you own all the content. So all three of us have our own individual Substacks. Um, e. Jane's is Ask E. Jane. Jen's, I'm going to forget because you changed the title. It's called Money and Gossip as an homage to Succession. Yes, my apologies. So you changed it a lot in a very short period of time and my brain can't handle it. Um, Mine is called The Good in Us. um, And none of them has anything to do with uh, fiction. So anyway, when we, um, way back when, um, we started a Zoom group to kind of, uh, it, which was the three of us plus a few other people as a way to kind of write out the second and third and fourth COVID lockdowns. And uh, somebody jokingly said, hey, let's write a Hallmark movie together. And I'd never read one. So I thought, sure, let's do that. And it was just a way to ensure that we spent more time together. Um, didn't didn't come to anything and months passed and then... Uh, I was suffering from a very serious bout of nonfiction writer's blog. And I thought, you know what? Instead of a Hallmark movie, let's write a romance novel and start a Substack together and serialize it like they used to do in the olden days. And uh, here we are. And, you know, I think, uh, Jen, you pointed out recently that the original idea which was a really stupid one, was mine, uh, was that we were all going to sort of take turns. Like I'd write a Ugh. chapter and then I'd hand it off to EG and she write a chapter or whatever. <laughs> it just was untenable. So um, we decided since I think among us, I've, I've done more fiction writing 
I've been writing fiction since I was 12, that I would actually write the book. Jen would edit it uh, in a sort of um, close reading way. E. Jean would edit it in, 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 as a, a more general reader and massive bonus for Subsex subscribers. Uh, e. Jean would respond to readers' comments, which is like one of the coolest things ever. And here we are. We're a couple of weeks in, and the trial period is coming to a close in a couple of days. You know, I'm shocked because the we only launched this June 1st. And to find what? it, by the way, yeah, we're still in the what? same month. It feels like we've been doing this forever. Yeah, the the uh, wow. So, yeah, Eugene, can you? Believe I mean, that? where weeks. are we ranked? Where are we ranked now on Substack? Uh, I think we're holding steady at um, two. At what is the second place fi- in fiction? Yeah, um, that's amazing. I, Since yeah, June first. <laughs> That's brilliant. It, it'll take. It would take a bit of time to get to get to one because the person in, in the number one position is, <laughs> just, just, you know, uh, has been doing it longer. And I think we're, yeah. So we're at two on the fiction leaderboard. Congratulations. This is, that's definitely the strength of this writing. And there are definitely already cliffhangers. I'm, even though I know what's happening next, I I have the mind of a goldfish when it comes to this story. I Uh try to like erase my memory every time I read another part of it. And I, and I'm just thrilled with where it's going. And um, E. Jean, how do people find this? Like you've been doing Ask E. Jean because you, um, no longer have a magazine position. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. And so you started your Ask E. Jean, um, your Substack, but how do people get to Substack? Is it only an app? Is it on the web? Can you tell people how they can find Backstory Serial? Well, yes. Just type in Mary Trump uh, and they will take you to <laughs> the, the, I think the second thing that comes up is the Backstory Serial. Is Tap that in. true? Yes, it is. So Type in Jen Tob. Jen, you're you're the second. Let me. I think if you t- type in Jen Tob, people will take you right to your Substack and or Backstory Serial. It's we're out there. Um, we the the New York Times gave us a rave. Uh, we're getting all sorts of wonderful reviews. Readers love us. Just uh, type in Backstory Serial. Boom, uh, you're at Substack or type in Jen Tob or type in Mary Trump, E. Jean Carroll, Jen Tob. That's a little bit much. So uh, it's, but, it's B-A-C-K-S-T-O-R-Y-S-E-R-I-A-L dot com yes. because we have the domain name and that's going to direct you right into the Substack. And I feel like I'm Rachel Maddow, who's like coming on all the TV shows to plug a podcast right now. It feels a little awkward. But that's not going to stop me Um, because, Mary, can you explain again? What is the difference between Backstory Serial and The Italian Lesson? Mm -hmm. Um, The Italian Lesson is the romance novel. And I think we could make an argument that it isn't necessarily a romance novel. Um, There's definitely romance for sure. But there's a little mystery, some intrigue. all that cool stuff. So yeah. uh, it's set in Tuscany. Yeah. How Ooh. bad could that be? Who's uh, the main, so, who's the, so that, so you're saying it's not a romance novel or it is a romance novel? I'm saying you could call it that, but also it isn't, yeah. nece- it doesn't necessarily have to be right. pigeonholed in that way because it's, it's more. Um, but romance, readers of romance novels will definitely like it. I just also think that it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to be somebody who's read them before. Take it from me, because I never have, uh, to like it. Um, so anyway, The Italian Lesson is the book that's being serialized. So generally speaking, we get three installments a week, and one chapter will take about two weeks. However, Backstory Serial is the, is the substack itself. And the reason it's called that is because this project is as much about how it came to be and our friendships as it is about 
the romance novel itself. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't just be writing a romance novel on my own, right? That's just not something that would have occurred to me. So it's about the collaboration and uh, there's more there than the installments of the novel. We have recipes, um, we have knitting patterns, we have uh, vignettes about the fictional hill town of Capri. Cap- I can't even pronounce it, Calabri- <laughs> Calabresi, um, et cetera. And all of that is connected to things the characters do in the book, the meals they're eating, the scarves they're wearing. So it's sort of this immersive uh, three-dimensional experience yeah, that we, we've created. So immersive. When I've been watching Jen and Mary go back and forth about knitting patterns, it is Hysterical. The texts alone are worth their own substack. Uh, the two of you talking about uh, exact that you get down into the fine points of the color of yarn and the types of yarn and whether the readers are going to love this. And oh, I tried that. I don't like. Jen is interviewing uh, you know yarn store owners. It's un. It's just. <laughs> it's so entertaining. I mean the. Uh, 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 the warmth that goes into every uh, chapter and the behind the scenes is uh, uh, is very loving and charming and very interesting uh, about what's going on. So let's talk about sort of Substack generally as a platform, because I think I understand that Backstory Serials is like this um, – is almost like the, you know, it's like a the publishing space for the Italian lesson novel and then any other future novels uh, that are serialized uh, by this group. But Eugene, you have published for many decades books and in magazines, including that fabulous interview with Fran Lebowitz, who you took camping, which I can't yeah. believe. Um, and I wonder how you, how how is for those of our listeners who are writers, not just readers, and they you know they may not know yet about Substack because Substack only has about five hundred thousand paid subscribers. It's definitely in this growth mode. Um, wh- what do you think about it as a writer, um, as a as a way to have an advice column? It, it's great because it's direct. You publish directly to your to your readers, right? Directly, it's, it's just boom. Uh, yeah, it's they don't, the right. best way I know of to uh, speak directly to your readers. And so, when you write and, something and press a button, does it just show up on the like a blog, or does it get pushed out to their email, or what's uh, how does that work? Okay, yesterday uh, I got an ASCII gene problem, and the woman had uh, fallen madly for an amazing, amazing guy, and they went out to dinner and had quote tons of wine and uh, they went home and one thing Wait. led to another and uh, 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 she did some very silly things. So I post, so I uh, answered the letter, posted it on Substack and boom, not only does my advice come up, but then the readers can read the problem and they can answer the question too. So the, uh, uh, it's a, two-way street on Substack. Not only can your readers read you, they can tell you exactly what they're thinking about having just read you. And then you can get into conversations with them. And that is particularly uh, clear on Backstory of Serial because the readers, oh my God, Mary has a scene with a cow named Bella. Readers, <laughs> they're, they're they they lost their brains over this episode with Bella the cow. And, of course, there's all sorts of language now. The readers are going back and forth. Uh, oh, it's so moveless. And, <laughs> oh, I don't want this to move along. So that, that subset cannot be beat for that. So if you're a, re- a writer listening to this conversation, I would check it out. A lot of major journalists are on Substack. Uh they also publish in the Times and, you know, the Atlantic and uh, the New Yorker. They also have substacks um, because they like to be really engaged with their uh, readers. It's a really marvelous, marvelous platform. Just to add really quickly, um, I think most people do 
get it directly into their inbox and their email, but um, there is an app Oh, um, right, right. That they developed. I don't use it myself. Um, I don't either. Because I don't, I don't read on, I don't like to read on my phone, but, uh, you know, it, it's just convenient. So if you get the app and log in, you get all of your, all of the sub stacks you subscribe to right, right, right there in the app. And Mary, how does it feel when you're like, when you've worked through and decided, okay, this is the segment of the novel that I'm going to put up? And then you see readers' comments right away, or you see more people have decided to subscribe. And let me just be clear, um, people can, Substacks can be free. They can be, have a, a, a fee that could be monthly or annually. There's all different kinds of models. And if you, how does, how have we decided to, to, to deal with um, how Backstory Serial publishes novels in terms of our subscription model? Yeah, uh, usually with Substack, um, you, you know, everybody has more pay, free than paid subscribers and free subscribers get sort of, um, are guaranteed like one or two, depending on what your, your niche is, right? One or two posts a week and paid subscribers get those plus. So there are things just for free subscriber, uh, sorry, paid subscribers uh, in addition to what free subscribers get. So with um, with Backstory Serial, it's a little less straightforward because the thing people are really there for is the novel. So um, what if you sign up for a free subscription, you'll get the first two chapters. And then once the first two chapters have been published, everything else that's related, that's part of the novel will be behind a paywall because there's, it just doesn't make sense to give it to everybody because then what are paid subscribers getting? So I think what we'll do then is continue to sort of make the, the extras for free subscribers the mm-hmm. recipes, the knitting patterns, mm-hmm. and then only paid subscribers will get the rest of the novel. Only paid subscribers will get E. Jean's commenting, which I think is fair. Um, so that seems to be the best way to do this um, mm-hmm. because, you know, it's uh, it, the, the whole point of this was the, the romance novel. And I think it, it's, a, it's a commitment uh, for us and it just shows a, a commitment from the reader that they, and you know, if you don't like the story, you don't have to, you certainly don't have to pay for it. So for a reader, I think it's also really cool because, you know, as you mentioned, three times a week, you know, a piece comes out. There is a place on Backstory Serial where you can read in one screen everything today. Cause there are some folks who are like, you know what, I don't, I might not want to read each one or I want to go right. back and see what happened and I want mm-hmm. to click on all the installments. And so how mm-hmm. do they find, like right now, uh, how do they find everything to date? What would they would do? Yeah, I, just like any other website, uh, there's a navigation menu at the top of the homepage. And um, one of the things you can click on there is the Italian lesson. If you click on that, you go to the page where the everything that we've published in the novel so far is there in the right order. <laughs> so, um, you know, you start with the um, start with chapter one and read your way through it, just as uh, just as you would with a, an ebook or something. Uh, Jen, you've heard that uh, many of Mary's readers are saying. Um, they're loving it because it's just the perfect amount of short, shortish uh, chunks of uh, great writing and a great story. But it's just the right amount of time because people are so frazzled today. Uh, the, our days are choppy anyway with so much to do. You got to read the headlines. You got this. You got to do uh, these somehow. And I got to say, I think we stumbled into it. Or I think it was Mary's writing. I'm not sure how it happened, but somehow Mary, between the Mary and Jen, you sort of decided on the right amount of each of these chunks because I just hear people yelling for more and more and more, and I love that, and I love that, and 
uh, a lot of re- readers have confessed they don't have the time to sit down and read a whole book together. They just don't have time. Yeah. This is short enough and juicy enough that they can pay total focus to it, love it, and then move on. And then two days later, they get the next one. Yeah, you know, it's a it's an interesting experiment on the one hand in um, acknowledging people's short attention spans, but also yeah. forcing the delay of gratification. Yeah. Uh, whereas as 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 the creators of this, we actually get instant gratification, which is really doesn't all, often happen when you're uh, writing. So that's cool. Um, but as for the the segments, I think. Um, I learned my lesson. I, I, we, we published one and I realized afterwards that, yeah, yeah. it was probably the right length, but it yeah. didn't advance yeah. the story at all. It was almost entirely descriptive. And I realized that, you know, we're, since we're controlling how much people read and when they stop reading, right? we need to give them something. So that's right. why from now on, like installments might be longer or shorter, but they have to advance the story and they have to end on a note that's that that leaves people with some expectations. Yeah. What is it like to be in the fictional world, Mary, because your last two books have been nonfiction. And Eugene, I don't even know if you have written fiction before. Um, well, I, I, if you had told me four years ago that my first two books were going to be nonfiction, I would have laughed at you um, because I've been I started writing fiction when I was 12. And um, I always thought, not always. At some point, I realized that I I wasn't going to be a novelist, but I always thought I was going to be. I mean, that was that was there that was, was no plan? other. That was the plan. There was no other option. Um, why that didn't happen is a story for another time. <laughs> so yeah. fiction is the thing I'm most comfortable with. It's it's it comes very easily to me, and that's why I wasn't really concerned about wading into a different genre because story is story. And I mean, I, I definitely am, am approaching it slightly differently. Like I, I know that, uh, it, let's put it this way. Just don't say anything after I say what I'm going to say, because it's simpler. Um, like, you know, my favorite, my two favorite American writers are, uh, Toni Morrison and, and William Faulkner. So not so straightforward, right? Um, Henry James, uh, is up there. Very dense, you know. One Henry James paragraph can could be a romance novel length, you know. Uh, so having to um, kind of craft things a little bit differently has been—I I don't want to say challenging. Um, it's been fun, you know. Um, but the conventions of fiction are, are very familiar with me to me, and and I feel right at home with them. So so that's 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 been very helpful. I just want to tell Jen Tobb's listeners, the the Jen Tobb fan club, that the entire time Mary was talking about her two favorite authors, Jen had to literally put her yep. hand across her mouth to stop herself from what Jen. Uh, what it was just think? one of them that she she was <laughs> yeah, refraining she, from commenting it's upon. It's almost yeah. stupid. You know what? It's a dumb, dumb thing. Like I one time, one time made this comment. Oh, I don't like Faulkner, but I don't dislike Faulkner. I just said it, and so then I act like Have you read I act like I don't like William Faulkner, but I don't dislike him. I'm just not familiar enough yeah. with his work, and so it's gotten. So to how be can a you stupid, say you don't like him if you're not familiar with his work? That's all. That's I my did only read question. The Sound and the Fury in high school, and oh, didn't. That doesn't it, count. <laughs> I know. I also read Ulysses in high school, um, so you know who knows that things get mixed and you know together and some things we like and but I'm going to give it another try now Eugene, even though you have not written fiction in your day you have interviewed and written about many novelists and I wonder whether in observing how Mary operates and works and creates is familiar to you because you know I mean whether oh, it's Hunter yeah. S Thompson yeah. or any of the I mean any of the other people does Mary have like the temperament or the 
yeah. writing pattern of a of, of any of the novelists and you've in, you've met or interviewed? Yes, yes, she is a con- perfect combination of Hunter S. Thompson and Fran Lebowitz. Fran, oh right, totally, totally, because Fran uh, won't write. Absolutely, and Mary puts off writing like you have never. Mary has twenty. Mary, no, let's not exaggerate. Mary has at least five big projects going right now. I think five. Yeah, around five. Yeah, yeah. and you know, and so she and Fran have really devious, very creative, very charming ways of putting off right. Drives Jen and I. <laughs> Jen and I exchange looks. Oh no, I relate. You, I relate. You really, and, and it's just. And then uh, she keeps the hours of Hunter Thompson. She works, you know, uh, strange hours. She goes for long amounts of time. And, uh, yeah, she's uh, she's going to have an impact, I think. Hunter had a, a massive impact on young journalists and making mm-hmm. the story center around himself. That's That was his impact. Um, and I think Mary will have an impact on the field of romance novels because she's doing an entirely new thing here. Um, the, her character, the main character, is, um, I would say, unique in romance novels. Um, you can say her name, Anastasia. Anas- yes, I'm always stumbling over because I uh, uh, always want to say Anastasia. Because she's, you know, uh, uh, so I think, yes. So there's a lot of comparison there. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mary. Um, I just lost my train of thought because um, I, when you first said the Hunter S. Thompson and Friendly Boys, I was like, it kind yeah. of scrambled my brain a little bit. No. Um, Understandably. But, <laughs> what, but what I actually just had a, an interesting conversation um, for somebody else's podcast. It was not about this, but it came, it came up at the first, and, and, and he was like, "What? <laughs> what are you doing?" Right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's strange. one of the charming things about it, though. It's so yeah. unlikely. Yeah, it's uh, so yeah. unlikely. But why? Do you, why though? Why do people? I find this really interesting because that has been what made it sort of. Interesting news at the beginning of June when the New York Times and Today.com and MSNBC and on and on and on wrote about the fact that the two of you uh, were working on this together. Um, It was like, it's so unlikely. It's so surprising. But what? Why? Why do you think that's the reaction? Well, I mean, I can only speak for myself. Um, uh, If you had asked me two months ago or however many months ago it was, if, you know, most of the people I'm friends with like romance novels, I would have said no. Um, or not like them. I mean, that don't read them. Uh, I would say, no, they don't read them. I don't read them. It's not a judgment thing. I just don't read them. So it is unlikely. Like, it's completely unlikely uh, for me to be doing it. I, again, something that never would have occurred to me a year ago. And I think um, not not the combination of us as friends, but the combination, like how we've we've divvied up the responsibilities and the way we're going about it, I think is also unlikely. I, I don't know anybody else who's 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 doing anything this way. And and Jen, you mentioned something early, uh, earlier that's really important for people who might be interested in checking us out. This isn't it. I, this is just the first of many projects we have. Uh, we have many others on the back burner. All of us have ideas for uh, other books. They might be prequels to this one. They might be sequels to this one. They may ha- be in a, an entirely different genre. So, uh, you know, there, there's plenty of room for backstory serial to grow. It's interesting, Jen. Jen, we've got to, we get to ask you questions now, don't we, Jen? We get to ask you. Questions. I mean, you could. How, Go ahead. Can I? Let me ask you. Well, you're a, a law professor. You're a well-known writer about financial crimes. Uh, you, you know, uh, you have two really, really. Uh, both of your books sold phenomenally, but they're about finance and. Uh, White collar crime, uh, fascinating. Um, how did you 
uh, behind the scenes, Jen is sort of the flame instigator, right, Mary? Would you say that she keeps she keeps everything going? Like, what's the next recipe? Oh, I'm going to get a pair. Of, I got to get a photograph of shoes for the cobblestones, you know. And I got to do this. And what's she eating? And let me go make that. What was it? Coffee drink? The marocchino. Yeah. Well, of course, Jen runs off and makes it and <laughs> photographs it. So Jen is sort of, uh, Jen is, Jen is sort of the pumping. The she sort of pumps, the, keeps the blood pumping in this thing. It's uh, Jen that does that. Um, really, yeah, Jen. Yeah. How do you keep your enthusiasm up? I'm only squinting at you because. Um, Often it's because Mary has a list of 10 things to do and I beg her because she's doing 10 things. Could I take I one thing off your plate? And then I don't actually do it. Mary should not have been involved in all of my, all of the escapades with the knitting shops because I said, I'll oh. take this off your plate. So the only reason why you think I'm very oh. active is because I always get people involved. It's like in yeah. my house, I almost never cook or do the dishes or clean anything. And then when I do it, I make a big fucking deal about it. I'm like, oh, I put the dishes away. And Michael's yeah. like, you know, I do that every fucking day. Oh. You know? So <laughs> so you it's may have the, the misimpression that I'm doing all that. But um, I want to go back to something you said, Eugene, about, about convention. Because I think what we're talking about in terms of narrative and plot and um, what Mary's saying is, well, maybe it's not really a romance novel. Oh. We just, I think that we put that label on yeah. it because when you say romance novel, there's certain expectations that right. readers are going to have, that right. they're going to find some pieces that someone's going to right. fall in love. That's right. the, and whatever, and, and that it's going right. to have a happy ending. Those right. are the two rules of yep. romance novels. Everything else, there are some conventions about right. who the characters should be, right. how the plot should develop. But over the years, I th think that's changed. And I am not an expert, E. Jean, but you are. <laughs> and so I think I want to have you remind me, not only have you read a lot of romance novels of all types, from the Harlequin romance to yeah. the, the present form, but you've written about it. And you started to say a bit back that Mary was doing something unique with this character and with the plot. So can you give us the yeah. foundation for which you make that judgment first and then tell us what you think without giving away too much? What's unique about what Mary's doing here? Well, Anastasia is unique. Uh, she's one of the great things about the book is this is about a group of friends and they all have careers and the secret sauce of this book is these women are ambitious. It's a very strange, yeah, very strange in a romance. Now, you always have one ambitious character in a romance, now, but all of Mary's characters are ambitious women, and they handle, they take that, um, you know, sort of in our cultural, uh, women being ambitious is sort of a. a not a no-no, but you have to, in a, in a way, camouflage your ambition or dress it up. Or these are straight-up ambitious women. And Anastasia is the heart and soul of that. And so when you're reading about Anastasia, you're also reading about a woman who is making it. She is making it on her own. And it's that, I find that thrilling. Uh, with the movie The Devil Wears Prada, for instance. Remember the end I always loved yes. that movie, and I hated the scenes where she has to go home and deal with the boyfriend. I wanted to get, <laughs> get back to the right, get back to the totally. magazine with you know totally. with Meryl Streep. And I, you know, so that's Mary's novel has a lot of that, which is I find engrossing, and it carries over into the romance. Um, uh, you yes. make such a good point because I hadn't. I mean, obviously, I know that each of the friends yeah. runs their own business in Calabrese in this Tuscan hill town. Isn't that interesting? But I had not thought yeah. about the fact that the scenes are for the most part set in these businesses, yeah. the spaces yeah. that they own. Yeah. It's pretty, that's not that usual. You're right. Yeah, it's unusual. And Anastasia is very unusual herself. Um, she's, um, uh, she's got a bit of a heat of a heath cliff about her. Uh, <laughs> just that. a touch, just a touch. Yeah. 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 Well, it's also uh, interesting that 
um, you know, when we came up with the idea for the Hallmark movie, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we were just playing around and we just <laughs> came up with one convention after another, yeah. an expatriate American uh, in a bad marriage runs away to Italy and opens a cafe and this handsome guy comes in for a cup of coffee, their eyes lock, they fall immediately in love and they set up, of course it's happening during Christmas and, uh, you know, they set up a date for the day after Christmas and then she disappears, right? So so, um, one thing that's, that's, I find funny about that is that despite having not read romance novels, I I am conversant in at least some of the conventions, um, just as, those of us who have no interest in the royal family know more about them than we do yeah. about most other things in the world right. because it's just sort of in the e- ether. Um, but uh, so so we've actually kept some of some of that stuff, uh, you know, the setting and the expat American and and uh, a few other things. Although the story is is quite different and has a very different tone, um, but. I don't know that I really, uh, other than a few obvious things, I don't really know anything about how romance novels are supposed to be written. So I'm not defying expectations or I'm not, you know, um, breaking the conventions because I don't know what they are. And it's sort of fun to watch Eugene, who has read many, 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 many romance novels. I just freak out. (laughs) <laughs> I she love what she does do too that. she can't do that I know I mean no. sometimes you do it out loud and sometimes it's like all caps I love when right. you do that <laughs> so what is it Okay, I guess this could be a real, um, a real confession. Um, ha- have a- either of you ever co-authored anything? No, no. My ego is way too. When I get with other people, I disagree with everything they say. I, I, I that's if they they give me a plot, I'll, I'll take. I just, well, I did uh, write uh, on Saturday Night Live, and that was totally. Uh, yeah, you had to write with other writers, and all I did was. I, you know, I just agreed with their ideas. I just, yeah. I never found my ideas strong enough to fight for my own idea. And I, so I'm not mm-hmm. good at collaborating. So I, what I am with Mary is I'm just sit back and let her, she is behind the wheel. She's driving this thing. And, uh, it, yeah, this is Mary's novel. And it is a good one. And I think uh, um, I love that she combats Jen and my sometimes some of our ideas. Mary just, this is Mary's book, right, Jen? It's so, but it's so important though, because I think all of us, I appreciate one of my editor edits. And there's a difference, you know, there's a difference between an editor's always going to, make comments, some of which you'll accept and some you'll reject. And to be a good writer, you have to know which ones to reject. You really do because I think each of it, because it goes to not just style, but something like I might want, oh, add something here, but maybe Mary already knows it's coming later. And I I don't have all that information. And that's Uh um, my favorite thing to do is sometimes when sometimes I'll like go, hmm, I'm not sure about this, but I don't think I'll say anything. And then Mary will come back and say, I don't like this. Can you help her? And sometimes I don't know. I've learned to sort of not solve a problem, but say I'm confused by this. Mm -hmm. Um, And if Mary wants me to like come up with some language, that's one thing. But sometimes it's easier just to say this is working or this isn't. And sometimes I try to put these even these comments like this makes me laugh each time I read it or. But I don't think I do that enough because I think, oh, she, you know, she doesn't need to see the comment like LOL in the margin. But should Ooh. I do more of that, Mary? Like LOLs and yeah, it's, I mean, it's nice to yeah, okay, it's nice to know what's that. working because mm-hmm. um, uh, I I sometimes don't know. That's such a good um, point, right? You know, and um, I mean, I, I there's no doubt in my mind that when this book gets published as as an actual physical book there will be lots of rewriting and revising happening 
<laughs> for sure. Hey, Mary, um, can I ask you mm-hmm. a question? Are you writing now in the mornings, in the afternoons, or at night? I, I'm whenever. I have so much work to do that I don't, uh, I will write whenever I can at this point. It's not sustainable, but it's necessary in the short term. So I think though, if I, if, if I were ever in a position to get on any kind of a schedule, um, you know, I'm not really a morning person, uh, but I think I would, my, what I would prefer is to, you know, maybe, maybe get a little bit of nonfiction writing out of the way in the morning. Right, right. Do everything else I need to do, uh, you know, whether it's work out or running errands mm-hmm. or what have you, and then just write in the afternoons. I think that would be my that would be my um, my preference because you know it's just I, I'm not sure. I, I I'm mornings. I I'm not very productive in the morning. How about you, Eugene? I've changed from What's night your- to I've changed from night to morning. Uh, I've noticed that. Yeah. You used to be up really All late night, yeah. and, and wake up really. You know, I, I would just go to text you and realize that it was yeah. only 11.30 in yeah. the morning. I'm like, well, it's too early. Yeah, no, I, I'm starting to like the morning. I'm now thinking if I don't have stuff done by noon, the day is done. I, it, mm. it just, um, you got you to go when the juices are flowing, right? Yeah, and yeah, uh, I think that's that, true. So yeah, I changed my own mind. I guess I got old, and older people tend to run out of steam by the mid. So I'm being an old person. I'm doing my thing in the morning. Love it. Although I, I, when I was writing my second book, I was up every morning at like five. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, I was writing. Oh, fast! You were so writing it was a, kind of a. Yeah, it was like five thousand words a day. It was crazy. And no, stupid. yeah, but um, you know. But there was something really nice about knowing you have the whole day and you're being yeah. productive for thing. Yeah. So I it's think that's a, I think that is my ideal schedule. It just it just never happened for whatever reason. I guess it's something one has to train oneself to do. I think you have to let yourself. The only way it works for me when I do my writing in the morning is if I really honor the work by. Yeah. Allowing myself to tweak it if I want to, but not saying, well, if you were so productive in the morning, then you're going to fucking sit in that chair and keep working. I have to then in the afternoon let myself run errands or listen to music or go for a walk because that has to be the reward. Otherwise, and then you, if you, if you want to edit, that's fine. But like, I, um, I really, my ideal is morning. Um, yeah. Cause my brain, my, you know, my brain is fried, you know, you know, there's just, so much going on. Anything could, I, that, that's how when I used to run, I used to be a runner right. and I would run in the morning. And people say, mm-hmm. don't run in the morning because your body isn't warmed up. Right. My thing is if I haven't run in the morning, it's right. never going to get done. I agree. Well, that's actually, you know, that's always been, not always, recently, the thing about writing first thing, then if I get stuck, everything else gets pushed off. And uh, I'm, I'm realizing more and more that... Um, I hear Eugene writing. Exer- exercising what are you doing? is well. Okay. I was looking up Colleen McCullough. Yeah. Okay. So, so Mary, you're saying that everything gets pushed off, but you want to do exercising, and so well, I, I'm realizing that that you know, exercise is the most the most important thing if one mm-hmm. wants to be productive, and if yep. I'm, you know, just really slow with the writing and it's not it's not coming, and I just kind of stubbornly refuse to move on to something else then it's too late to do other things. And the one thing I can do to guarantee that I'll be more productive with everything else hasn't gotten done. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's I sometimes not go efficient. for a walk. And sometimes when I'm going for a walk, especially if I don't listen to anything, mm-hmm. I'll suddenly have things come together mm-hmm. and then I'm like right. typing madly in the back mm-hmm. of my notes in my phone. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's hard to, I think it's, I think it's a chicken egg thing because whenever I go for walks, I'm always more productive with my writing, but then, but the days I don't want to walk, I'm not, but that may be a chicken egg thing because if I'm not, in, mm. if I'm not yeah. in the mood to get moving, I'm probably not in the mood to get my mind moving. But, um, yeah. what are the tricks that you do, Eugene, to trick yourself well, into writing? I, I'm wait, gonna, wait, just really quickly. Oh, sorry, I, need, I need to know what's going on with Colleen McCullough. Well, oh, yeah, sorry. she would sometimes get 20,000 words in a day and it would... <gasps> What? Without a blot. 
She would write straight, and Wait, she'd get up early in the morning. But on they, pen, pen, with a pen, and write? Yes, or a typewriter. right. She, I think she used a typewriter, but she would go. When she was hit with the thing, she knew just to clear the area, and that was it. So I had to but look that up. That's, I, that that's was, like 50 pages. I know. I I understand that. So does Simonon. Simonon would all, he would do three books Who? a year and clear his schedule and just... Sit down and do the entire book in one big swoosh. Uh, Wait, what is the word? What was the person's name you just oh, said? Oh, Simonon. Simonon, the great French writer who oh. wrote, you know, I don't, you know, he's just, well, he's, so I mean, there, there are people who get up in the morning and just are, just have this, and they don't get in the way of their own flame. They don't get in the way of their own flame, you know. Colleen didn't take a break to go to the do a laundry or do this. She just went straight through, and that's how she got right. all the her books done. I, you know, uh, oh, like the Thornbirds, right? Yeah. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah, the I'll never forget uh, that. Like that. The that, bane that mini of my series? childhood. Oh my I love God, mini series. The I men. didn't watch the mini series, but oh every God. woman, like my parents' age, yes. There was one summer, it was yes! MM, MMK's book, Yes, The Far Pavilions, and another summer it was The Thornbirds, and yes. I was like, oh my God, it, these it, women it, carrying these yeah. massive tomes. Yeah, well, um, the, yeah. You know, yes. <laughs> I think the point is made, though, that I every I can't tell you when I do ask writers for, for uh, on Booked Up about their writing habits, I have never heard ever a single writer say, oh, it's, it's, it's effortless. And I just go every day, <laughs> same time. <laughs> well, Anthony Trollope would sit down, write four pages and leave. Yeah. yeah. Like he'd really? finish a novel, just turn the page, start the next one. Yeah. He'd start so the next people, one. He'd start the next, yep. if he had that two hours left, start the next one. Uh, yeah. uh, but that's, that, that is definitely uh, a rarity. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I mean, I wish I could get on a schedule. Just seems yeah. like there's too much else going on. I don't know. I think your creative juices, Mary, are yeah. attuned to your being all you know this way, that way, this way, totally that. discombobulated. Yeah, I think it. I <laughs> I, I think it works for you. Okay. I, yes. want, I want it not to. And so, um, oh. what can Sorry. we? Cat so, just bit me for absolute. Ouch. What's the matter? Who the cat? So that little so, vicious beast. So what? folks, when um. What's going on over there? Yeah. I'm sorry. Mary, what I, happened? I was, Who was it? I was petting Cap and she decided to attack me. Good Lord. She's in uh, a mood. Mary, what is it? Do you think she's um, pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, Jen. It's something about Mary's yes. ankles because her bird also <laughs> attacks her ankles. And now Cap is atta- attacking her ankles. That's a good point. Are you wearing socks or no? <laughs> oh, there's Cap. Yeah, Hi, Cap. Cap is, uh, just oh being my it. God! Oh, hello. That's it. Hi, Cap. That's a beautiful cat. Oh nope, off camera. So, by the, well, this is going to air on uh, today is Sunday, and uh, I think at this moment, Backstory Serial is uh, now subscription only for the Italian lesson. So, right now, if you haven't started reading, what you can do is you can still get a free subscription. And what that will do is if you sign up, you will get a welcome email and it will take you to the website, Backstory Serial, where you can read the first two chapters of the Italian lesson. I know you'll love uh, what you see. Um, uh, While you're there, you can look around, try the Maracchino, start knitting, Um, And so on. But if you want to know what's going to happen after chapter two, then you would have to subscribe to keep supporting Marion, Eugene and my writing and procrastinating habits. It's 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 quite (laughs) right. It's quite important. No, Um, it's very it's very exciting. And you mentioned earlier, uh, Mary, that this might actually become a printed out book. What about a movie? Oh, I totally see this being a movie, don't you guys? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. I I, I see it being a movie more, but more than seeing it being a book. I honestly. do too. I do too. Oh my god! Could we yeah, film no, it on location? Because I have never <sighs> been to Italy. True story. Never been. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think that's compulsory. Like, I, 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 I don't know. Eh, something's wrong with my brain. But I was fantasizing about having this made into a movie. And I was uh. like, damn it. What if they film in Croatia or something? Oh. <laughs> what? Well, they I, did film some no of Succession on a yacht in Croatia because yeah, yeah, it was a yeah. good place to film at yeah. one time. It's beautiful. No offense to Croatia. I'm no. sure it's lovely. I've seen it from the air, but yeah. I'm, I absolutely am in love with Tuscany. And Mary, who do you see playing Anastasia? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Oh, let's think. Let's think. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, mm. There's so many great actresses at this age level now. What about are, Philippa Sue? She would be fabulous. She's from Hamilton, E.G. She would be fabulous. Yeah, she looks like her. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I think that she might be atop my list, but yeah. I'm sure there are many other. I'm thinking, how, like how think old is uh, Kira Knightley at this point? Is she 38 now? I think she's 39, maybe. She, she's got to be. I mean, you know, the characters are around that, yeah, 38, Kira, 40, 42. Uh, you know, I see sort of Kira Knightley. She has that determination that Anastasia has. She's taller than I imagined Anastasia being, but that's, I think that's irrelevant. Not, who's going to play... <laughs> she can play short. She can play she, Danilo and Matteo. Ah, uh, well. Oh, well, Jen. Jen, I think, is a little bit in love with Matteo. I, I am. What about Antonio Banderas? Can he, is he too old? I think he's too old. Oh, man. But a young Anthony Banderas. Oh, he was such I a... I guess George Clooney's too old, too, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. way. Yep. Okay, that's that's how I'm casting now. I mean, in that kind of <laughs> that kind of ra- that kind of you know vein. Well, we'll have to. You know what? We'll have to ask people's opinions about who yeah. they. Oh, you know that would be actually a good feature. Let's have that, that actually be the be question. Great. Yeah, let's have. Yeah, that, that, that should be the next question. That would be a good question. Do they? Do you think they know the characters well enough? Well, they know Anastasia. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I think they Maybe do. Maybe not though. Maybe. Well. Hey, listen, we can we can we can ask again, and yeah. we don't have to ask about everybody. We can just say, you know, we can pick two characters. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think should play Anastasia and Danilo or whatever? Yeah, and I want yes. him to send us pictures of Bella, the cow. Oh, oh Bella. Yeah, she does. Well, she's, she's here's she's another question. Girl. I think I think E. Jean, you're going to have to have a cameo though in this, and you too, Mary. So you have to decide which you have to write oh, yourself. Film? You have to write us in as cameos, Mary. Oh yeah, that, sure. That, well, we we can in, be some of us can be in the knitting group. Okay. Oh, I'll that's do that. good. Yeah, that's good. Um, I like that. Not me. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not me. Um, I, Eugene, can you act? No, I can't act. I, I, can't. <laughs> I don't know because I know who I would cast you as. So do she, I. Yeah. I so can't. Do I. At one time, I did do something on a uh, sitcom. I was horrible, horrible. Just uh, very cardboardy. I, only I could be worse. I'm sure of it. No, Jen, you would be good. Your hair alone no. could play a role. Just your hair would be, you know, uh, really. All right, uh, I'll come up with a cameo for a head of hair. That, of hair. that just, just is in the cafe. It. Yeah, woman with a head of hair drinking the maracchino. That's good. I like it. Maracchino, damn it, I can't say it right, but I, they taste good. Yeah. Okay, so folks, any uh, anything I didn't ask you about either backstory cereal or the Italian lesson that you want to talk about? Yeah, Jen, are you planning on writing the next our next one in the series? I think you're doing something about one of the I characters. Thought it was you. I thought it was you. I thought oh, well, you were. I, I want to write a little something about Anastasia's godchild. Yeah, yeah. you. But it's so entirely different. That's okay. That's so the is point. Jen's, but actually, we can't even talk about Jen's because it it involves something we don't aren't supposed to know yet. <gasps> Shh, top secret. Shh. Oh, but if you subscribe. It's a backstory serial. You will <laughs> oh. find out in chapter four. Oh, good. I'm, I'm so gonna, excited. Oh, good. Now, we have a question from a viewer. Wants to know how to give a gift subscription. A, 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 a viewer known as Joyce. She wrote a text, <laughs> a text question. How do you give a gift subscription? I actually don't know. Um, it can't well, be. I know. I, okay. I, I know how to do it. I knew. I know how to do it as the proprietor yes. of the Substack. I don't know, know how to do it as a Substack subscriber. Well, that's what we we should. If Joyce gave us her friend's 
email addresses we could give them. But no. that's not, but it's one, not. sure. But two, we, that doesn't help the people who don't have access to us. Yeah. Right. Uh, if that's Joyce one thing I f- don't know because I just know it's automatic. Like they send, yeah. That's one little glitch I don't know how to do outside of unless you're it's the- sh- Shocking that we don't know. We'd like to thank that caller by the name of Joyce for sending in thank this you, Joyce. question. Thank you, Joyce, for uh, yeah. that question. I, I wonder how she's uh, liking the uh, book. She yeah. loves it. She especially loves all the knitting references. Oh, yes, really? I, would, did. I, I didn't pay her as a knitter. But she said more cowbell. Yes, she did. Yes, she's so. And more chickens. <laughs> uh, just wait. Just wait, everybody. But, you know, just George has a good wait. thing. This would make a great present. This subject would. would be a great present. Um, okay, yeah. I'm going to get on it. That's going to be on the list of things I do. Like you say, Eugene, I'm going to find that out. I'm going to ask the, the folks at Substack. Um, and, and we should have a special. I, we should have a special gift thing for people who want to give gifts over the summer. They get a little a special thing. Well, I don't know what This it is would a be. great beach read. It is a fantastic beach read. Okay. Well, I am so glad, friends, that you joined me for the book club because this is, you know, it is our little book club. Usually a book club is made up of readers, but right. we are a book club <laughs> of writers writing a book yes. together. So it's so fun. It's been, it's, it's been real. I'll, um, I'll see you guys on Backstory Serial for the next installment. When is that one coming out? Oh, never mind. This is Sunday. So if is this is the, coming out Sunday, when will it come up? Uh, the next installment will be uh, the very first installment of Chapter 3. Ooh. Okay. Um, yeah. And that will be coming on Tuesday. Cool. This is Well, great. let's get back to our knitting. I'm working on that very nice scarf. I hope you've started oh, yours, yes. Eugene. Not yet. I'm going to start mine tonight if I have the right yarn, which yeah. I may not. This but is, I don't. I, I, I do. Don't. You know what? I never care about the yarn. I just knit with whatever yarn I got on hand, which I think people do. Yeah. I have a lot of uh, Noro Silk Garden, but yeah. I don't I don't want to use it for the scarf. No. I want a solid color. Yeah, I'm doing a solid undyed uh, wool, like the way a fisherman knit sweater would look, but it's going to be the scarf. Know. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I actually, there, there's one of the colors that I really, I think it was, it's actually called Buona Notte. Uh, which would be funny. But as I just learned, Pearl uh, Soho, which is yes. literally four blocks from me, no longer exists in physical form. It's oh, no. Only an all- online store. Uh, yeah. It's only online, which is terrible. Oh, I yeah. once ran into, what's her name? Pretty Woman. Who was Pretty Woman? Julia Roberts. I ran into Julia Roberts at Pearl one day, one afternoon. Oh, She's no a way. knitter? Oh, big time. Big well, time. I bet she hmm. would like this. Let me you reach out to her people. You have kept this from us. What is I happening? Think, I think I, we should reach out to her people and see if she wants to join our knit along. She, uh, she likes the womanly arts. I'm surprised she wasn't having a loom at the time. I mean, she was really, <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. She it's might. been it's been super fun. Um and how do we find, let's, can you remind me, Mary, how does everyone find this lovely new romance novel? I, it is at BackstorySerial.com, and as Eugene suggested earlier, you can just Google... Mary Trump. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Could just Google Backstory Serial or The Three of Us or what have you, um, but uh, BackstorySerial.com uh, is the most direct way to get there. And, uh, yeah, and to catch and, up, just go to the Italian Lesson tab, second tab. That's right, and... Um, you know, we'd love to see you all there yeah. and let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, love it. Somebody I know will answer your comments. And Maybe. Awesome. Maybe, unless Maybe? I'm, oh, no, no, I'm, right. unless I'm taking a nap. Okay, Not that's right away. Right. Remember, this is an experiment in delayed gratification. So. Yes. <laughs> and oh, sometimes oh. Jen and I chip in with the comments too. Yeah. So. I do. Sometimes. Yeah. It's true. Not my forte. So if you're unlucky enough to get my comment from me, I apologize in advance, but I try. Thanks. (laughs) Bye. Bye, Bye. ladies. Thank you so much for indulging me. I know that the project we are working on is fiction and Booked Up is 
typically reserved for nonfiction books by nonfiction authors, but I figured all of us technically fall into that category. We've done nonfiction before, and this is a particularly unique collaboration that we're telling you about so you um, as readers and also as authors can learn more about the opportunities over at Substack. I've really enjoyed having a newsletter there called Money and Gossip. It gives me an opportunity outside of Twitter, which is kind of a complicated space these days, to be able to talk about stuff that's happening in the news that relates to money and fairness and justice and inequality, and yes, a little bit of gossip as well. To find a Backstory Serial on Substack, you can just go to BackstorySerial.com. It will direct you right to our Substack page. And then to catch up on the Italian lesson, click on that second tab. It just says the Italian lesson, and you will be starting off with that beginning of the story that I read at the top of the show. And you will be able to read all the way through through chapter two. Um, If you want more, uh, please subscribe. And I'll be back next week with another episode of Booked Up as we continue to explore the writing process and the nonfiction world together. Let us know what you think. Send an email to bookedup at politicon.com. You can also write to Booked Up at P.O. Box 147, Northampton, Massachusetts, 01061. To keep up with the show and our featured authors, follow Booked Up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And please give us a five-star review. It really will help other people find the podcast.